Turbo 51 over here! I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. Guys, with three rounds left on the calendar, including this one, we are here at the Circuit of the Americas in America for the American Grand Prix. That's a lot of America in just one sentence. But in any case, guys, this is a solid weekend. We have fitted four upgrades to the car and yes you have guessed it right let's head straight to the performance shot and guys look at that beautiful list there we in rich energy horse racing are topping the performance shot for the first time i think ever in this formula one career red bull on other second best with racing point just behind them in third you guys know drop a like down below i deserve your like for getting finally to the top part of the performance chart williams are now in fourth with ferrari in fifth mercedes are sixth mclaren seventh Renault 8th, Alfa Romeo Racing is 9th, and Scuderia Toro Rosso are still in 10th. Guys, we're looking forward to a very, very good episode. You guys know two races ago back in Japan, we really had a very bad race. But the previous time in Mexico, we, we confirmed that the pace of the car is still there. And with a full four upgrades fitted to the car, we really have to make sure that we get a solid amount of points this weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm sure Max Verstappen is going to come out swinging as well as Racing Point. So without further ado, let's head straight to qualifying. It's time for today's qualifying session to begin here in the United States. Welcome to the Circuit of the Americas. Now then, Anthony Davidson, you're not getting any younger, but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you have that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. You're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now and it never gets any easier. Guys, jumping straight to the end of Q1. You guys can see myself and my team at Roman Grosjean get ourselves through easily. We've got five cars out. Gio Giovinazzi, Magnus, and Albon, Stroll, and Kvyat. They are the ones out of this Q, uh, out of qualifying. Heading into Q2, guys, I did one run on the worn set of softs. Tried to go for a run on the mediums like I've been doing the past few episodes. But guys, the mediums here around Kota, just like all the other attempts. Right, they, at the end of this lap. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. They are not the tire to qualify on. If you want to qualify on the mediums, you have to do that for your first, well, your one and only um, run in qualifying. Otherwise, you will not get through on the mediums. The soft tires are just too quick, even if you do a lap on a worn set. So, um, and e or even though that you guys saw that I was three tets off of the time coming through the penultimate corner on my fastest lap on worn softs. So really, is it sometimes worth trying to get through on the mediums into Q3? It's obviously worth it because if you get through, you have the best possible strategy but you really are at risk of falling out in Q2. And at this stage of the championship, we cannot afford it. We come across the line for our final run in Q2. We go P8. We are the car that moves our teammate Roman Grosjean out of the top 10. So, uh, sorry, but uh, this is my championship. I have to be there. And as you guys see, Lucas Weber um, and Sebastian Vettel are the two drivers to watch actually this weekend. They were extremely fast in practice and um, they are really here with a mission. Guys, heading into Q3, onto our first run. Once again, a worn set of, soup, of soft tires. And oh, 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 wee! we play Formula Drift as we lose the back end and luckily keep the car out of the barriers. Here's a replay of what just happened, guys. We were just a little bit too eager on these worn tires, a little bit too aggressive. And the tires just said, oh, hell no, I'm not doing this. So that is that. That is the end of our first run in Q3. So we're only going to have one solid run in Q3. With, so we only have one opportunity to set a quick lap time. And some of you guys might be, oh, that's not the worst thing in the world. Luckily, you've still got a chance. But guys, I don't work like that. I use my first run, run to determine the, the, the grip levels on track. Because even though you're with a worn set, if the worn set really sticks, you have so much confidence going out on your final set of tires. Obviously, they're, they're a little bit more slippy, but I've learned by now how the grip levels should work to know that your final lap's going to be a grippy one. And um, yeah, this one did not give me a lot of confidence because... We're tenth in the speed trap, 296.9 kilometers per hour. Obviously, we're last because we basically made it an in lap. Jeff, oy vey, this guy, this guy. But in any case, guys, so long story short... Checks complete. 
All personnel be aware, we have a car leaving. Long story short, all personnel be aware, we've got a car leaving. <laughs> Guys, long story short, I didn't have a lot of confidence for heading towards this final run and qualifying. But uh, obviously, like always, you guys know me, I'm going to go for gold. I'm going to push the car to what I think, think the limits are as we start our lap here to go around the circuit of the Americas. Heading down the home straight, up the hill, into the very first corner, which is a hairpin. You can break very late into this corner thanks to the uphill section. Third gear as you round the corner, plant the power really quickly, but watch out for the downhill descent because that tends to give the car an easy amount of oversteer, well, easily a lot amount of oversteer. So you really have to be careful. Heading through what, probably my favorite S's, well, my second favorite S's on the F1 calendar, the, ca the S's here at um, Kota, which probably is the only thing I love about this track. I really don't like Kota, guys. But in any case, it's still a brilliant track to drive and you feel like a boss when you get a lap hooked up around this track. Heading through this very next left-handed um, hairpin, I nearly said chicane. Barreling down the back straight, guys. It's a, it's a little bit of a kink in the straight, but it's flat out all the way. You can hit immense speeds going down this back straight. Unfortunately, the rest of the track does require um, reasonably high downforce, mid to high downforce. So that does compromise your straight line speed, but not by too much. I think I'm running four, six wings, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not too bad. Heading into the last part, no, heading into the final sector, guys. Now we are in the final sector. There's very, very tight and twisty bit in the second sector, which really tends to overheat your tires, especially the front. Now into this flat out quadruple right hander. It's a beautiful corner. Into the penultimate corner, a left handed kink, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a slow corner for a kink. Into the final corner, second gear. I missed the apex just slightly there, but I mount the cup on the outside. Open up the RS and it's P! With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Verstappen, Weber and Sebastian Vettel. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well done. Very solid results. You're looking good for the race. Not the best, but also not the worst result, guys. So we're just have, gonna have to work a little bit harder, harder than I would have wanted in the race. But guys, without further ado, let's head to the American Grand Prix. In 2012, America's on-again, off-again love affair with Formula One finally seemed to settle down with the completion of this wonderful racing facility here in Texas. Since then, we've been treated to some incredible races, including, of course, that classic wet-dry championship decider of 2015. We're racing today, then, in Travis County, Texas, around the 20 corners of the wonderful Circuit of the Americas. We'll be reaching speeds of around 200 miles an hour, and there are plenty of good opportunities to pass, especially through the two DRS zones into Turn 1 and the very long back straight into Turn 12. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? They've had to change their gearbox. It's never a good start to a Grand Prix when right off the bat you have to contend with a grid penalty. Well, at the end of the day, it's always better to take some pain now than parking it up halfway through the Grand Prix. Let's just hope they can put that new gearbox to good use and get the results they're looking for. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position. And starting alongside is Lucas Faber. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Vettel, Hamilton, Pierre Gasly, O'Connor, Norris, Bottas, Grosjean and Devon Butler, Russell, Raikkonen, Sergio Perez. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Ricardo, Giovinazzi, Albon, Lance Stroll and Kevin Magnussen. Leclerc and Daniel Kvyat completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. OK, this is the team's home race. We're all relying on you to impress today. Oh, shoot! I forgot it's the team, ho the team's home Grand Prix. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more weight on our shoulders. But guys, one just one thing. I apologize for the the driver's images that they didn't render as uh, Crofty ran through the grid. Sorry about that, but there's nothing I can do about that. Guys, furthermore... Guys, aggressive two-stop, but I think I'm going to convert it into a one-stop. We'll see as the race commences. But, um, yeah, hit the subscribe down below. And don't forget to ding the bell if you're new to the Turbo Fox family. And please jam with me on the formation lap. Yeah.
the American Grand Prix as we head to five red lights and it's go, go, go for the American Grand Prix. Max Verstappen and Lucas Weber on the front row. You guys can see Max Verstappen is really taking this championship seriously. As heading into the first quarter, Max defends from Weber and Vettel as I go up the inside of Lewis Hamilton and the second Red Bull of Pierre Gasly. Heading through this next part, heading into the S section. It is Lucas Weber side by side with Sebastian Vettel, but Lucas gets the jump. As also in the background, I get the jump on Lewis Hamilton. We'll head back to my POV in just a few seconds to see what happened in that first little kerfuffle between myself and Lewis Hamilton. Guys, heading through this next section, you guys can see Max Verstappen and has already tried to bolt away but the thing is that Ferrari does not have the pace of either the Racing Point or the Red Bull so Max has really got a long day ahead of him if he wants to try and keep that Ferrari ahead back to our POV for our start guys initially we get a good launch on the line just a little bit of wheel spin but luckily heading up the hill I quickly find traction and I get the car's the car power down you guys see I go for a dive up the inside they left the door wide open Hamilton forces me over the inside curb unsettling my car but not by too much luckily it's a very slow speed corner you guys see I hang around the outside of Hamilton but heading into the SS I just completely shove my car right in front of Hamilton's nose and there is nothing that Lewis can do about it guys I know my horse has definitely got the pace over the Mercedes Mercedes have really been it, they've really lacked in their development this season so the Mercedes is really not a fast car at this stage of the season it's a full midfield car I mean it struggles to come out underneath the McLarens and the Renaults so I'm not worried about the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton I am worried about Ferrari, Red Bull and Racing Point they are the three, car, the, 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 the three teams obviously fighting with everything they've got and Red Bull and Racing Point are in a champion are in a constructors championship fight with, <laughs> thank you Jeff, with our team Haas and obviously I'm in a fight with both the Ferraris because I'm in the championship fight with Max Verstappen. Obviously Charles Leclerc is going to try and stand Max at, um, by as much as possible. So I have to watch out for six cars, the Pink Panthers, the Red Bulls and the Red Maranello Ferraris. So we've really got a tough day ahead of us as well. Luckily Charles Leclerc has got a penalty so I don't think he's going to have to be aware of this Grand Prix. But you've still got Pierre Gasly coming from behind as well as Sergio Perez. So yeah, today we're worrying about five cars. But as you guys see, we end of the first lap in P4, struggling to hang on to the back of Sebastian Vettel. But guys, these front three cars, damn, they were, they were quick and they obviously wanted to race each other more than they wanted to race me. That's quite obvious because the more points they get on me, the better for their championship sakes. As you guys see, we jump on to Pierre Gasly. Guys, one thing I have to be honest about, I really struggled with tire temperatures this first part of the Grand Prix. Every time I would go onto this back straight, my right front would be well over 105 degrees. I'm talking about 107, 108. Sometimes that thing would be glowing orange red on the temperature gauge, as well as my left uh, of my right um, rear tire was also hanging about 106, 107. And then the two left hand tires, by the time we get to this first sector S section, those two tires are overheating. So this first step, I was really just trying to manage my pace and try and keep Hamilton behind me, which at this stage I'm failing but as I go for a very aggressive defensive move heading into the SS I do to him once again just on the opposite side of his car what I did on the very first lap when the race started now you guys see we jump back to the leaders as Lucas Weber is tucked up right underneath the gearbox of Verstappen and Vettel is tucked up underneath Weber's gearbox so these three guys are really fighting hammer and tong to see who can get the win for this Grand Prix and as you guys see they've bolted away from the rest of us but that's because I am the bottleneck because I'm struggling to keep my tires at the right temperature I am really really struggling just to, 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 to match them they were like half a second they're like quicker than me and that's not even a joke but luckily this which you are currently watching on your screen started happening Hamilton was fighting away with the second Red Bull of Pierre Gasly that gave me the chance to, to start running away from them so I can start managing my tires a little bit easier and try and stretch out the stint like I told you guys while the strategy was um, on your screen before the formation lap I told you guys that I was going for the two stop but I was most probably going to convert to the one stop reason being the mediums are a lot more durable here around Kota than people think so I was going to stretch out my soft tire stint as long as possible go onto the mediums and stretch it out till the end of the Grand Prix um, I saw in practice that the mediums didn't they wore just a little bit more than the hard compound tires but they were about a second a lap faster than the hard compound tires so that first strategy that you guys saw on my strategy screen going from softs to hards is just not a viable strategy here around um, Kota because then you will literally be faster doing a two-stop 
from two sets of softs to a set of mediums or even two sets of mediums onto um, a set of softs, whatever you want to do because the mediums are just that much faster than the hard tires. As the pit stop phases commence guys, this is Charles Leclerc from the back of the grid trying to get himself out of traffic pitting in the Ferrari. He's definitely going onto an aggressive two stop because he is onto a second set of red walled soft tires. Now jumping back to uh, uh, some other POV guys, this is the POV of Lewis Hamilton as he is still chasing after Pierre Gasly just through the S section we're heading now onto the pod, we're almost going onto the back straight and I think Lewis was actually fairly impressed with the Mercedes pace guys, I was impressed with the Mercedes pace this weekend because like I said they are struggling to keep ahead of the McLarens and the Renaults when you look at the performance chart but still when push comes to shove, not Bottas, Hamilton gets that car into very very strong points but um, unfortunately guys Hamilton was so strong at the beginning of the season I thought really at a stage he was undefeatable and the Mercedes just stopped developing their car I don't know if they thought that there was going to be a regulation change, they might have thought so, and then they stopped development to make their, their season ending expenses a little bit less expensive, but now they've really shot themselves in the foot, because now they are not even in the top 5 fastest cars, and they need Hamilton and Bottas to drag that Mercedes up into solid points. As you guys see, Max Verstappen is actually going for a very audacious one stop, the strategy I am avoiding with everything I've got. Pierre Gasly is also doing the same thing, he is going onto the white wall hard tires and um, yeah my teammate actually is doing a Charles Leclerc and going on to a second set of softs so hey Roman give Gasly a little bit of a hiding come on keep him away from me come on Roman do me a solid do me a solid my teammate as you guys see only a, I think it's just two laps later this is Sebastian Vettel coming into the pit lane and guys Red will realize what I realized during practice the mediums can go the rest of the way or they didn't because Vettel is going on to hard yeah, that's not the smartest thing to do, but in any case, you guys can see also it's myself coming into the pit lane, we'll rewind back to that in just a second, because now we're watching the battle for the lead, this is Max Verstappen, there is Sebastian Vettel on his inside, Vettel goes for an audacious dive coming out of the pit lane, into the first corner as they nearly run into each other, that was a very, very close moment, but Vettel gets himself ahead of that Ferrari, and that is now Vettel into the net P1. Guys, we're winding back to my pit stop phase, just so you guys can quickly see my pit stop actually went really well. Coming into the pit lane, guys, I was going onto the mediums and I was going to stretch these tires out to the end of the race. And guys, when I say stretch out, I really don't actually mean it. Because at the end of the race, these tires are going to be, they're going to be touching for... That is an illegal release from Haas. Cody's, fix that. There needs to be pit lane penalties. I can't believe I'm just, I'm just telling myself to get a pit lane penalty, but that's because of the team. That needs to be implemented into the game. Just a little quick note there. As Roman Grosjean, you've done me a solid just like I asked, my friend. Beautiful. He has kept Pierre Gasly behind. Well, he has passed Pierre Gasly, and now he has kept Gasly behind me. But in any case, guys, what I was busy saying is about the medium tires. I hope Racing Point realized what I realized during practice, please. But in any case, the mediums, when I say stretch them out, I really don't mean it. Because the mediums at the end of the race, they are only going to touch 40%. And unlike the tires in Formula 2, the tires in Formula, the medium tires in Formula 1, the, the middle compound, well F2 doesn't have a middle compound, but if you, if you compare the medium tires on, on the F2 cars to the medium tires on the F1 cars, they are much more durable. You can drive them up to about 60% wear and then you've only got a problem. The F2 tires, you start touching on 50 and you've already got a massive problem. So I was not even going to, I was only going to nip 40. So I was really going to the end of the race and I could be aggressive. But as you guys see here, I came up with a little bit of an idea. As you guys saw there, I let Roman Grosjean, my teammate, pass me. Now you're probably asking, Turbo, what the hell is going on in your mind? Guys, this is what's going on in my mind. I can basically poach DRS and Slipstream from Roman Grosjean while saving fuel and ERS. When I feel the time is right, I will re-overtake him or I'm just going to wait till he does it into the pit lane. Because he is on the, so the, the, the softest... Oh boy! There's a front wing breakage for Sebastian Vettel as him and Verstappen are jolting away for P2. You guys saw Lucas Weber... Racing Point saw the strategy, they are onto the mediums and they have basically banked Lucas Weber the win for this American Grand Prix. But that is now Sebastian Vettel without a left front end plate. What happened here? Oh, Verstappen locked up, couldn't get the car turned in time and then um, Vettel ran into him. 
that is really sad for Sebastian Vettel, guys. You guys can quickly see the top 10 here on your screens as I'm quickly going to keep talking about what I'm going to do with Roman Grosjean. Guys, first of all, Roman did me a solid when he held up Pierre Gasly. He is on the softest compound, so he is going to have pace. I mean, we've got the fastest car on the grid according to the R&D performance chart. So... All that I had to do was my, was keep um, on to Grosjean. We've got two massive DRS zones here at Kota, so that is possible. I needed to latch onto his gearbox, make sure I poke DRS while saving fuel and saving ERS. When the time was right, I was going to have so much fuel that I can basically keep the car in rich mode till the end of the Grand Prix, and I'm going to have a, bit, a, a little bit of ERS to play around with as soon as I get out of the dirty air of Roman Grosjean. And guys, the reason is you save fuel so the engine doesn't overheat. You save your, your tires because you just keep about a more than half a second distance. So as you guys see, I'm still behind Roman. And now with Sebastian Vettel driving a wounded Red Bull, it is now time for the Williams of Lando Norris and both of us Haas cars to, to get past um, Sebastian Vettel. But guys, this was the lap where I realized Roman was starting to go slower because he was lapping faster than Lucas Weber in the lead. With him pulling me along, I was setting personal best after personal best after personal best right behind him. This, this lap is where I realized his first sector pace was very bad, so I passed him, made a quick move about it, and here we are now right behind Sebastian Vettel in his wounded Red Bull with the slower compound of tires, which are older than my tires as well. So coming out of the slipstream, but just like Roman Grosjean did me a solid with Gasly, I'm going to do him a solid with Vettel. Keep Vettel a little bit behind. I swerved in front of Vettel. I forced Vettel to, to come off the throttle. And that is an easy double move for Rich Energy Haas Racing on Sebastian Vettel. Thank you, Roman. And guys, I've been complaining this whole season that Roman Grosjean has not been doing his part, and he hasn't been. Because as you guys see in the constructors, we could have been the construct we could have been fighting for the constructors. But Ferrari and Mercedes are just too far ahead. And now with Racing Point and uh, Red Bull and Red Bull stealing points from us, there's no way we're gonna win the constructors. So that I'm still a little bit mad at, mad at um at Grosjean for doing but this race he has really done me a super duper solid so thanks Roman you're not as bad as I thought and here you guys see this is not on Sebastian Vettel guys this is on Pierre Gasly guys something I didn't catch now this is, uh, this is actually Vettel but guys also at some stage Pierre Gasly also broke his front wing there was contact somewhere on track and Pierre Gasly also broke his front wing and actually ironically also on the left front so, Red Bull have had an absolutely atrocious weekend. Very strong qualifying, very strong practice, but the race has gone up in smoke because now they are both driving wounded cars and there's no point in pitting guys because they will come out P15, 16, 17, round about there, and they've got to be able to make a few positions, but they will not go. Uh, they will not be able to get points. In this situation, if they still drive fairly good, they might come away with a few points. As we look at the band that started in P19 with the number 16 on his car, Charles Leclerc is coming for the move, and I think he is actually making a move. He's going for a double move on George Russell and the McLaren of, I think, yes, that is Devin Butler. But unfortunately, the McLaren of George Russell, oh, the McLaren, the Williams of George Russell just says, uh-uh, uh-uh, George is not ready to give up this position. But the Ferrari, at this stage of the Grand Prix, does seem to be the faster car, and I think Verstappen is on the faster tire. Yes, he is. And oh, Verstappen, Leclerc is on the faster tire, and then he has gone up into the well, whatever that position was. Going on just later into that lap, guys, he has caught the rear of Pierre Gasly driving a wounded Red Bull. As you guys see, he goes to the inside. A very easy move here on Pierre Gasly, the Frenchman, and that is Charles Leclerc, the man from Monaco. Oh, sorry, guys, I just accidentally bumped my table into I think that might be P8, round about there. As you guys see, this is actually my teammate, Roman Grosjean. And I do not know why, guys. I think he might not have had any mediums left. But for some other reason, after his double soft tire stint, he went on to the hard. And this is Roman heading into the first corner. Up the hill. That's very loud to the break! Yeah, that's not legal. That's not legal. Um, Grosjean, you illegal eagle. Um, yeah, okay, Grosjean, you have just ruined your race. Even Valtteri Bottas has got front wing damage. So Kota is like Monaco and Singapore. It's busy eating front wings for breakfast. But, um... Yeah, Grosjean has just ruined his race. As guys heading to the final part of this race, I've got get a massive tank slapper as we head onto the back straight. I am under pressure from Sergio Perez. Guys, the racing points have got stupid pace. They are the cost to beat come the end of the season. So heading into Brazil and Abu Dhabi, I've really got a, a big challenge ahead of me. 
But as you guys see, we get, we luckily defend our P3 from Sergio Perez. Um, obviously, with, with Sebastian Vettel breaking his front ring, we took P3, as you guys saw. This is now Charles Leclerc making a move on Sebastian Vettel. So actually, Leclerc is now up into P6. No, P5, P5. Because it's Weber leading the way from Verstappen P2, myself P3, Perez P4, and then it was Vettel P5. So that is Charles Leclerc with a very solid drive up into P5. Here you guys see Devin Butler going for a move on Pierre Gasly. And guys, I think this is for the final points paying position. So I think if Butler gets this move done, Gasly will be out of the points for this American Grand Prix, which is really sad because Gasly did, did have a solid race going for himself. Um, but guys, that was the Grand Prix. And this man, my former F2 teammate, Lucas Weber has driven an absolutely astonishing race. GG's Lucas, you deserve this one. You're not in the championship fight, bud. Well done. Guys, we only lose a measly three points to Max Verstappen in the championship. Excuse the, the, the bouncy replay there. But guys, we round the final corner and it's a solid P3 here in America. And an incredible win for Racing Point. A brilliant performance. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both. Racing Point's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the veterans of the sport. They're making their way out to the podium now as we speak, and the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. This result narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Charles Leclerc showed exactly how to manage yourself out on the track today. He was almost flawless out there. Incredible stuff. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari continued to extend the gap at the top of the table. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Two races to go, guys. Brazil and Abu Dhabi wait for us. And guys, thanks to our two strong finishes, the previous two Grand Prix, we can seal the championship in Brazil, just like we did it in our second season of F1 2018, driving for Scuderia Toro Rosso. But guys, with Racing Point, Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes trying to make a comeback, we're gonna have an uphill battle. It is not going to be easy. Great work this weekend. It was fantastic to see you up on that podium. Thank you, Emma. It was fantastic to be on the podium, I'm not gonna lie. But guys, heading into Brazil, the pressure is on. Look, guys, I would love to see the championship in Brazil. It would just make Abu Dhabi more of a scoping out for new teams because you guys know the drill. If I win the championship, I'm leaving Haas. Then I'm going to another team. Um, so, yeah, we are basically... I want to use Abu Dhabi just to scope out the crowds and see what's going on. So let's hope Brazil goes our way. But knowing Brazil and Brazil being Brazil... It's gonna be hard. But guys, that has been this episode. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying till the end. You guys rock. Please, if you haven't done it yet, drop a like down below on the video. It's only gonna take you two seconds. If you really like what you've seen today and you are not yet part of the Turbo Fox Races family, please hit the subscribe. Don't forget to ding the bell to never miss a future episode. We are nearly returning to the Dirt 4 Rally uh, career mode as well. And guys, finally, share this video with your friends to get the word growing. We're gonna hit 100 subscribers pretty soon, guys. And you guys are gonna help with that. But I'll see y'all next time in Brazil. Cheers!